Lesson number two, learned behavior or conditioning. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain that an animal's early experiences in life have a big impact on the way in which it behaves as an adult, and explain that animals can learn through conditioning, and recall that humans can make use of conditioning when training captive animals for specific purposes. Behavior which changes in the light of experience is learned. Pets will show you learned behavior in action. For example, heading for the kitchen cupboard will soon grab the attention of your cat, if that is where you keep its food. The possibility of food links the responses of the cat to your movements. To begin with, a young pet cat will only show interest when the food is seen and tasted. In other words, seeing and tasting are primary stimuli, which the cat associates with food. With age and experience, it learns to associate other stimuli, called secondary stimuli, with food. For example, its owner heading for the food cupboard. The secondary stimulus itself is not directly linked to the possibility of food, but the cat has learnt the association. We say that the cat has become conditioned. The Russian Ivan Pavlov was first to study conditioned responses scientifically. He investigated the production of saliva by dogs in response to food and other non-food stimuli. Pavlov noticed that when food, the primary stimulus, was placed in the dog's mouth, the flow of saliva increased. He also noticed that the flow of saliva increased as soon as the dog smelt his hand, a secondary stimulus, even before the food was placed in its mouth. The dog's production of saliva was increased when Pavlov's personal smell was followed with the taste of food. After a period of presenting the dog with both his personal smell and the taste of food, Pavlov found that his personal smell alone was enough to make the dog produce as much saliva as if it had been given food. Pavlov also conditioned dogs to produce saliva in response to other stimuli, such as the ringing of a bell. This type of conditioning is called classical conditioning. It fades unless it is reinforced from time to time. Trial and error learning is another type of conditioning. This time, the learning develops because of reward or punishment. The American scientist B. F. Skinner, 1904-1990, set out to investigate trial and error learning in rats and other animals. The picture shows the Skinner box. The lever in a Skinner box is the key to an animal's learning. If pressing the lever means it will get food, the animal will quickly associate pressing the lever with reward and keep on pressing. If pressing the lever means an unpleasant stimulus, a mild electric shock for instance, the animal will quickly associate pressing the lever with punishment and leave the lever alone. You can probably recognize when some of your own behavior is the result of this type of conditioning Early experiences of reward and punishment affect our behavior as adults. Both types of conditioning are used to train animals. Pets are conditioned to respond to their owner's commands. Other animals are trained to do work, like circus animals in films, as police sniffer dogs, and guide dogs. Yeah.